What's up guys? So this isn't really a vlog. I just wanted to give you guys a little visual look at the podcast we've been doing, Searchable as Reptiles. This is episode 7. Well, this is actually a clip of episode 7. The thing is this camera stops recording after like 30 minutes and I've, I've toyed with the idea of putting clips up on YouTube of the podcast, but I figured I might as well just put it here on the vlog channel so you guys can kind of check out what Garrett and I have been up to as far as the podcast goes and, and kind of see what our setup looks like, which is a lot of time just sitting in a hotel room. And the reason I've been doing video versions of it is because we're not always in the same location when we do it, so I wouldn't be able to cons consistently make that happen. Um, as for me, I've been wearing these same clothes for a few days now. I had a reptile program yesterday. I'm going to play with our band down in slow in about a half hour. I just want to give you guys a little bonus look at this. Before I start the clip, down in the link in the description, there are you can find the shirts for upcoming Southwest Carpet Fest, which Travis Johnson is hosting at his place over there at Living Legacy Reptiles this year, June 13th. Uh, hopefully, I know there's already some people coming. Jimmy supposedly is coming this time for real. I think Jesse's even told the idea of coming down and uh, it should be a good event. All the proceeds for the shirt, 100% of the proceeds for the shirt go to US Arc. So it's a good cause. And uh, I'm going to let you guys watch that clip now. And I'm checking on down the line. Check it on down, it's feeling fine. Check it on down the ride. Pop, 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 pop. Here we go. <laughs> testing, testing. Pop, pop, pop. Uh, it's all right. One of these days, I'll get this audio stuff under control. Audio. Actually, I feel like it sounds pretty freaking good. Sounds good to me. I like it. Is it, uh, mine sounds quieter to me. Is that just my headphones? Yeah, I think it's just your headphones. Cool. I can crank the headphones up a little bit if you want me to. No, I mean, I don't care. I just want to make sure you're getting the signal over there. Oh yeah, I can see. I get virtual. I get visual confirmation of the signal. That's. I figured you were. Are you gonna pour me a drink or what? Are we starting? Oh, I don't know. We can start. Is this recording? Uh, that's a good question. Start the recording, and I'll start pouring. All right, I'll start recording. You start pouring. Wait, and on. is there something? Is there a way that we usually start these things off? Yeah, you have music. You play. Okay. You put in it afterwards. We introduce ourselves. We should probably say the things like that it's not child friendly nor about reptiles. So if you're a child or care about reptiles, stop listening right now and go do something better with your life. I uh, was just wondering how I was going to hold up with this. I've had two and a half hours sleep. Good. Since. Uh, Wait, are you actually recording? Can I pop this open? Please pop it open. Oh, because this is actually, this is literally how we start it. How did we get that bottle of goodness? Right. What is that bottle of goodness? Yeah, this is Jack Daniels Single Barrel Select from Scott Bolter. Thank you, Scott. You're, Scott you're just, old boy. Scott just had a, his first clutch of super dwarves. Is, is that, that not spectacular or what? It's like his dream for the last three years. At least that's what he calls me about, but that's probably, that's probably a reason why he always calls me about that. Yeah. Whew. He bought the last female that I stupidly sold. After I sold that female, I was like, oh, why did I do that? I was retarded. I'm never selling an adult female again. And he got eggs out of it, and they're going to be spectacular. Hey, cheers. Cheers, bro. Scott's a good man. A anything that makes Scott happy makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Oh, this single barrel select tastes like Scott, and that makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I haven't tasted it. I'm smelling it still, but it... I, I can almost smell where you're coming from. Well, I already drank a whole bottle of this by myself because technically you know this story. You drank the whole bottle. By myself. By yourself without me. And Scott, so you had to buy a second bottle so you Scott could replace the bottle Scott bottle. bought. Well, but it's like weird because we're Is this not the exact bottle that he bought? Because I feel like you sent me a picture of something that didn't look anything like this. It is this exact, not the exact bottle. It's the exact liquor. Okay. Same size, same everything. But yeah, Scott bought me this and i was up at his house and i had like carried it all around and i was like here i'll give this to you remember this at the show i was like i got this liquor from scott you live in california you should take this you're like i ain't taking that so somehow i ended up taking it back to pittsburgh mm. then it was supposed to come down here to dallas i don't recall any moment where you offered to give me a bottle of liquor and i said i'm not taking that i don't think that happened yeah, it probably didn't happen like that <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I held it. So I was supposed to be here in Dallas, uh, but I drank it instead. So I had to buy some more. Here in Dallas. Dude, so Dallas. So technically, I sponsored it. Thank you, Garrett. Scott, uh, <laughs> I enjoyed <laughs> getting drunk off of you by myself alone in my office. Dude, I've had about two and a half hours sleep. 
And the night before that, I had two and a half hours of sleep. So I'm just hoping that I can hold it together long enough to make this all all happen. Yeah. I've been, think, I've been hoping that every hour on the hour this whole day and yesterday. So I think it's working so far, but and we got the whiskey. And we're and sitting, down. sitting down. It's pretty good. As soon as I sat down, I can feel like blood returning to the areas it should have been all along. Yeah, exactly. And those beds over there look comfy. We are literally in Jesse Johnson's hotel room, and it smells like men in here. It's nice. I could lay down and yeah. We had security come the first night we were here. It's just the two of us sitting here talking about cocoa blocks. Like Jesse was going <laughs> off about cocoa blocks for like three hours up till like four in the morning. He sounds like me when I talk about super doors on yeah, this podcast. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Shut up! <laughs> security came to the room. <laughs> it was literally just the two of us. This is pretty intense. I'm glad to know that he is that passionate about the the chunky cocoa block. <laughs> well, he found a post. Somebody randomly made a post. That was not in any way affiliated, or he didn't even know it was going to happen. And they were like comparing different products to Cocoa Blocks, and they're showing that it, it indeed was chunkier than the rest of them. And he was beside himself that somebody else <laughs> had realized what it was he's been trying to tell people all along, which is that it's, it's the chunkiest, chunkiest <laughs> substrate on the market. I, I didn't even know that was something we were looking for. I mean, I guess some people are into the chunky ones. <laughs> I held a Gila monster. I go for easy. Yesterday, <laughs> for the first time. That is cool. That was over at Earl Jones' place? Yeah, Earl Jones, dude. Earl yeah. Jones has been the man for this trip so far, dude. Like well, this person. I mean, there's a reason for that. Yeah. He's been the man for you for this trip. Earl has been, like, pretty nice to me, <laughs> but he's been, like, walking around, you know, I don't know, dabbing your face with makeup and stuff, keeping you looking beautiful and sharp and... 30 pounds of chocolate later for fajitas. <laughs> Do you care to fill us in about this? Okay. Two two months ago. Th- one thing before we get into this story, I'd like to mention that this is the first time that this podcast is going to go out before any of the vlogs and videos that are released that happened around the time of this podcast. The podcast is going up, well, literally the day after tomorrow from filming. It's going up or from recording. So you guys are... Almost live. Almost. Virtually live. More live than even... You can almost smell the Jesse Johnson. You can almost taste the Scott Bolter. (laughs) So a couple months ago, Earl reached out to me, and he said that there was a young girl that he had been in contact with and working with her family, and he shared the story about this girl. She she had... uh, She's at 10 years old. She had uh, surgery, heart surgery, to fix a 15 millimeter or so hole that was in her heart. Mm. And um, and aside from that, the other thing that was interesting about this girl is that apparently I was her favorite person on YouTube for reptiles. I think you, the way he put it to me is that you were her favorite person on the planet Earth. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he asked, so he he asked me if I was coming to this show because her birthday was like the day before yesterday, mm-hmm. and th- as a birthday pr- surprise for her to to meet me, if he was asking if that would be a possibility, and I was like. I was planning to come to the show already, and even if I wasn't, I, if there's a girl like that that wants to meet me, then yes, I'm going to come to the show, and we will make that happen, because that sounds awesome to me. Like, that's... For sure. So, um, the other thing about this girl, so I met her, obviously. Can we know what her name is? Gracie. Gracie. Hi, Gracie. Gracie, and That was Garrett throwing your name out there, just so you know. <laughs> Gra- Brian was just talking about himself <laughs> with you in the story. Well, she's... A, a delightful i mean she's a bright light of a soul of a ch- of a of a human being dude and she just like so we walked in the room like her uh earl's uh stepson held the camera as we walked to the restaurant and she didn't know i was coming and she like the look on her face when she when i walked around the corner was priceless dude is that gonna be on his channel lone star reptiles it'll or? be on it'll be on the vlog channel my, oh, my, your, vlog, my vlog the channel, brian cusco one right yeah. so well, i want to see that reaction yeah and uh and she just and I was nervous because I always, I always, you know, you don't, you want to live up to people's expectations, which is almost virtually impossible. No, I, always, that's, I don't. That's why, well, all my vlogs. That's why been, I do this podcast. <laughs> all the <laughs> vlogs I've been putting out recently have been like almost in the back of my mind, subliminally. I'm, I feel like I'm thinking, like, how many people do I get to unsubscribe with this video? Like, I want to keep people's expectations low because I don't want to disappoint people. I, my, so that's why I was nervous to meet her because she's like, I'm, I'm her favorite person on the planet. I'm I can't possibly live up to for that. For all of our listeners who are listening to this right now, 
I never understood why you would listen to this until right now. As Brian is talking, I see a glimmer in his eye, and I realize listening to us on this podcast makes you guys feel better about yourselves in comparison to what r ridiculous garbage we come up with on this podcast. You're like, these guys are ridiculous, and they're podcasting it. <laughs> I feel so good about myself. Hey, you know, <laughs> I'm just melt away when I listen to the absurdity of honestly, Garrett and Brian. Honestly, that is one of the goals between any any kind of po content <laughs> I put out publicly is to help people feel better about themselves, if, if, even if it's my expense, especially if it's my expense. That's even better. That's the best kind. So anyway, this girl lit up my weekend. I know meeting me for her, they kept telling me it was like I've made her weekend, made her year, but I would say it was equally for me. She was so such a bright light and such a kind soul and she wants to be a, an exotic reptile vet that's what she wants to do and uh she seems pretty driven we went around the show did a video with her like holding animals she's never held before and she has this natural ability to um hold the animals like the way she's holding them and letting them crawl through her hands and doing it's very intuitive all she's these very animals confident very, very soft confident very at the same yes, time yes yeah so i really am hardcore on team gracie not just because she was hardcore team cusco but because after meeting her she's i want her to fulfill her dreams that we need more people that are exotic reptile vets who are also keepers she does keep snakes she got one from her she's got a snake from you <laughs> see i was just waiting for the part of the story where it can be like brian makes her a day makes her show makes her year just by showing up and she is like brian Meanwhile, little Garrett over here sent her a super dwarf because that's what she wanted for a super dwarf. I show up and she's like, "Well, I'm sorry, I'm talking to Brian right now. Can you go away?" <laughs> I've also, um, I've, I've cried I'm about, just kidding, I've cried about ten times in the last twenty four hours telling people about this girl yeah. because she had that hard thing, but also currently she has something going on in her brain. Yeah, um, she's she's a trooper, man. Yeah, and uh, they're the doctors were. were she talked to Chase, as we know. You guys don't know um, mm -hmm. Chase um, Patton, who's JKR J Justin Gavilka's facility manager. Most he, people, they many were people both know. at his birth at her birthday. As right, well. right. There, yeah, there was Justin a bunch of people. Chase. Bunch of people came over to Earl's house. Yeah, there's a whole crew of there. Ton Jones. I mean, there was a his. It was a full house. Um, but he so obviously Chase went through that. If you guys know Chase's story, he had a brain tumor recently and went through all the process and treatment. And he's in, he's recovering and he's doing good. And so he's going to reach out to his doctor and get in a second set of opinion for her so they can move forward. Because right now her doctors are just kind of sitting on it, like, say, we're going to wait and see what happens type of thing. And she's, like, having fainting spells right now and, like, yeah, Jeez. I don't know. I just want I want to see this girl. I want to see her fulfill her, her dreams because she's an awesome person and because it's something our community needs is more people who are, are exotic reptile vets who are also passionate about keeping animals and not just going to school for it and learning about the animals through books and becoming a doctor, but also actively keeping because that's like the ultimate like combo for an exotic vet is somebody who's an active keeper and spends time with the animals and learns them on a day to day basis, you know, caring for them as pets. Yeah. I feel like there's a shortage of that in, in our field, hobby, industry, life, yeah, universe. No, for sure. You know, something comes up. I was just joking around about being all jealous because she's in love with you. And I was like, wait, I was the one that gave you the snake. This dude just showed up. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he was coming anyway. I mean, come on. So I'm glad you had this life experience changing whatever with this girl that I've invested so much in. But <clears throat> I mean, no, that's cool. It's cool. It's all cool. Um, but no, in, in all seriousness, you know, sometimes I think, you know, I know that I do this. Like if you see somebody... Like, you know, Gracie, she's been through a lot. She she has a, a great uh, story to share, and she's very inspirational. Especially, I, I can imagine, like, you don't know who watches these things that we put out. So there could be somebody else that's going through that that doesn't have the hope and the support, but they can kind of see that stuff. And then I think sometimes there's people who are like, well, what's this? Do You know, so this girl gets Brian Cusco and Justin Kabilka and Tun Jones and all this stuff coming to her birthday party, like, I don't know, I'm a fan of these guys, how come I don't ever get any attention, you know what I'm saying? And it and it's it's funny, um, you and I both have been accused of this, like we're at a reptile show, 20,000 people coming through, somebody comes there to see us, and we don't, we're, we're talking to so many people that we don't give them 
whether it's the, the right amount of eye contact, we didn't shake their hand or we didn't listen to their story enough or whatever. And it, it's not intentional. You're not trying to like blow anybody off. We actually come to these things to try to meet as many people and talk and share as much as possible. It's just only, you know, so, uh, so much you can do, but, um, but yet both people have said about both of us, like, oh, I met that guy in person. He's a douchebag or something like that. And I wish that it was possible to do more things. Like, obviously, Earl is doing a ton for Gracie, and he is, like, extending and overextending himself to bless her because it, it is a blessing to him in his own life. And, I, you know, I wish he could do it for everyone, but it reminds me of the old starfish story. With the kid on the beach, you ever hear this one? Uh, maybe if you say it, I might find it. I don't know it off by Starfish. I don't know it. Well, the star, the, the, the story is there's a, a young kid. He goes to this beach in Mexico, and there's some kind of starfish thing going on, migration or whatever. And the the tides get rough, and there it washes thousands upon thousands of starfish up on the beach with every wave that goes by, and they're drying out, and they're dying. And there's a little kid that runs out there, and every wave that washes up a thousand starfish, he grabs a couple and he throws them back in. And he runs back, and the wave comes, he throws a couple more in. And, and an older guy is watching this, and he comes up to him and he says, Son, you know, don't you realize for every starfish that you throw in, a thousand more wash up on the beach? He goes, Ultimately, you're, you're, you know, spending so much effort over here, and it doesn't matter in the end because so many, like, it's hopeless. They're all going to die. And the, the little boy picks up a starfish and he says, well, it matters to this one. And he throws it in. He picks up another one and says, it matters to this one. And he throws it in. And it's perspective, isn't it? You know what I mean? I think that's why people like Gracie are so inspirational to us because it takes us from the perspective of being the man, saying it doesn't matter, to the boy saying it matters to this one. And I'm going to do what I can when I can. That's all any of us can do, right? Wow, this podcast got deep and sad fast. You look yeah. like you're gonna cry right now. <laughs> I am. Stop it. <laughs> that, that's a good. That's a good one. I do remember that story. And yeah, that's uh, it's good to be that little boy. I like mean. I like to feel like that little boy. You know, because if you if the old grumpy man who says it doesn't matter, then then it doesn't matter. And then if it doesn't matter, then to me that's that's sad, because. Things do can matter. You can have the perspective. I've had that perspective. Where nothing matters. I've I've had the fuck it attitude where the nothing matters. Sure. Like I've been there. Mm -hmm. It's it's all diff different perspectives. I, the nice thing about being a human in this world is we have the ability to change our perspective at will. Almost like you, if you have a strong enough mind, you can change your perspective at any given moment, and you can be the old man who doesn't give a shit, or you can be the kid who really cares enough to be like make as small a different or as much a difference as possible, even if it ends up being the smallest difference. Right. And you can be either of those at any given moment. Right. Yep, I think so. It's powerful. It's a powerful thing to know that you have that power to make that change and be what either one of those people. Yeah. Okay, let's jump into the segment of where we dive deep into the shallow end. We've kind <laughs> of already perfect. been doing yeah, this, this is right perfect. now. Yes, good All timing. Right, drink up. All right, if you guys kind of like where that was going, well, you'll see a video tomorrow kind of that reflects what we were talking about there on the video. As well as uh, you can watch that podcast or listen to that podcast anywhere where there are podcasts, you know, Apple, whatever the podcast platforms out there. It's, it's on most of them. So you can find it there. Uh, join the Searchables Reptiles group on Facebook so you can leave comments as, and maybe have some input as to the direction of some of the, the podcast topics and just kind of engage with us there. I am, I'm going to go. I need to go. I'm, I've got things to do, but I'll see you guys tomorrow for another video. Bye. I remember why I'm so busy now. <laughs> I'm leaving for Australia in a few days. I'm trying to get all my ducks in a row before I leave and uh, that, that entails quite a bit. So I'm, I'm scrambling, I'm scrambling, but it's, it's a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to the trip. Hope you guys are gonna enjoy coming along with us on the trip and uh, bye. And uh, the, those of you that have already listened to the podcast and are wondering, well, I thought you don't play that band anymore. I said that if they call me again, I'll go play. So they called me. I'm going to play. Bye. W one last thing. Garrett goes on to talk about some ideas for Indonesia and the Kurumpa Super Dwarfs and, and tying the two different worlds together to make it 
a thing that supports itself where the, the the production over here supports production over there and the conservation of the species while also supporting local people over there while supporting people over here and making it a way he, he explains it much better on the podcast so go make sure you listen to the second half of the podcast so you can hear about that last time bye for real bye I just realized my autofocus was off for every single one of those clips of me talking into this camera just now. That's annoying. But I'm not going to do them over.